How good are the default watercolour brushes in Critter? Let's find out. So as you know, I have been testing out digital atelier brushes and they are, you know, absolutely stunning brushes. But one or two people have said to me that they would like to use um, the digital atelier brushes, but they just can't afford them. Their budget doesn't um, stretch to allowing them to buy those brushes. So that got me to thinking... Um, can I do a reasonable watercolour with default brushes in Critter? So what I've done, I've created a new tag down here and I've called the tag watercolour. And I've gone into default brushes in um, Critter and I've gone through them and picked brushes that I would think might be useful um, in a scenario where I want to paint watercolour. They're not all watercolour brushes, though. Some of them... Um, I, well, I've got one marker there. I'll, I'll just show you. I picked this marker pen. Make it a bit bigger so you can see it. Because it's got this nice sharp edge, and I thought that would simulate using a flat brush in watercolour. Um so i've sort of mixed several brushes together so the first brush i'm using here is just called wet paint and i'm just using that to paint in a nice soft sky i need to get back to my reference image hang on a second there we go and i'm just sort of i don't like that actually uh, the yellow in the sky I'm just sort of demonstrating these brushes as I'm going. So this one is the wet paint, but I've also got an oil paint brush here called Wet Bristles Rough and one called Bristles Five Flat. And that gives, oh, I've still got that wrong. Cool, let's go back to the blues. I want a blue. look at that that gives like you're using a really big brush and the bristles are, um, are leaving their mark on that wet paper I kind of like that so as you can see I'm putting in a kind of a wet sky with these two I've used two brushes so far I've used um, the Bristles 5 flat and the wet paintbrush. So I'm going to just put a little bit of a warmer colour just as we come down to here. So it's not the yellow we had before, it's more of a subtle orange. warm it up a bit I'm going to use that um, bristles flat brush and it's, this isn't really a watercolour brush but it just really gets that nice effect going so I can get in some lovely wet washes what is wrong with that you know that is as good as anything I've seen really put, put some greens in or oh, struggle with greens. I think the thing is, if you if you make the brush really big, it sort of blurs out the actual bristle stroke, and that's what gives you the watercolor brush. If you have it smaller, it looks much more like um, an oil brush. There's a nice reed effects. So I need some uh, blue again because I want to get some water in. 
down here. Now I could use that marker brush here, I suppose. Just to get a, a, a nice hard edge in there. Let's make it a bit bigger. Oops. I'm getting a very steady hand in. I will get there. And then you think, okay, but I don't want an odd edge at the bottom. So we've got a couple of options here. Um, I could use this brush, which is called watercolor texture. No, not that one. Hang on. Uh, it might be this one. Watercolor fringe. That's it. Now, obviously, that's way too, too much. I'll knock the color down, knock the size down. And maybe a little bit bigger. And use that to soften off that edge like that, look. To get that kind of um, blurred cauliflower look, if you like. Or I could use this uh, Blender Basic brush to get a softer, more traditional kind of blend. But I do like, I like the uh, the other one. Um, I think it was the Watercolor Fringe brush, yeah. And you could have sort of had like, the um, paper's drying a little bit here. Imagine the paper's drying a bit. There we go. So I want some distant trees, but I'm going to put them in bluer than in my reference image. Um, <clears throat> let's try one of these other brushes just so we can see what we've got. This is the wet textured soft brush. Can't remember what they all do. I just, I, I think at this point, because we are on a watercolor, I need a new la layer. Oh, and I should say, I've used one of my textured papers that you can download free from my website. And I'll put that in first. I'll put that at the top of the stack and set the blend mode to greater. You can see if I toggle it on and off, it doesn't affect the color at all and i've also changed this might be worth mentioning as well i changed my um image color space i've i've got it set to rgb alpha and 16 bit now if you've got a slow computer you might want to go with 8 bit uh, but 16 bits does give you more um colors and then i just let let this profile set itself automatically so that's the profile i'm using now let's see if i can put a little bit more to the oh i i'm on the wrong layer i i locked the top layer so that i couldn't um now that you see i think is a nice effect that we're getting in there these distant trees. The more I use Critter, I tell you, the more I like it. And getting rid of the bottom, I could use that soft blender. Got a bit too much there. I've just sort of reduced the size of that blender. I could have used an eraser. I could have turned the brush around. 
on my uh, tablet and just use the eraser to lift that out as well to get a much sharper line. Oh, uh, I'm not going to do that there. So I've got some distant trees in. I think they look okay. I've got the sky going off. I might um, make it a slightly darker color. I've still got, I want to choose the same brush I had before, which was this one, the wet texture soft. Make the brush a bit smaller. Now, if I change the color slightly, is it going to blend in? It is. I just want it a little bit darker. Bottom. Hmm. Okay. Come with some reds. This is just like dropping colour into your wet wash, really. I could use that um, brush, the watercolour fringe, just make it a little bit smaller, just to um, give it a little bit of texture, make it look as though the paint's running into the other. Yeah, I like that bit there. <coughs> So I've got some distant uh, bushes in there, that's cool. Uh, I think I might have to use the eraser. And um, just sharpen up that. I think it will look better sharper. I can always put a wash over it later. And I'll, I'll blend that away in a minute. Probably be better doing this with a brush. I don't know. I'm just uh, sculpting in some leaves. In, into the side of that. So I'm using a, a Wacom tablet and I've just turned the stylus over to uh, paint negative shapes into that. I could do the same this side actually. There we go. And it just pushes those uh, hills back quite nicely. This is coming on rather well. Let's have another layer. I like I like to have lots of layers with um, watercolors. And then what I, I want to do, I want to choose a sort of um, an earthy color. It's still quite warm. Let's try a different brush. What's this brush do? Watercolour texture. Oh yeah, I've got to do this. This is just a really cool brush because it just puts on these huge sort of splodges. So, um, Can you see that? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to 
do it with a really dark color so you can see the effect just puts in these sort of watermarks so I am going to go in with that color just pop a few of them in and then I can paint over those later and they'll just add a nice texture I think maybe possibly a bit too much there don't want to overdo it I do not want to overdo it I'll do I just put that in just to show you the brush really then we've got these other brushes which I'm this one I think might be quite useful in fact that's the very one I want this one's called water paint hard edges and if you look at the photo there's um there's this sort of lighter I wonder if I can paint lighter colors over the top not really I want I don't want that to kind of touch the uh, background if we can help it I've got that in there do I need that other bush right in the middle <coughs> it, do, it it's dominating that photo so you know rules of thirds that has got to go I'm going to move that over I might put it just here actually that might be quite cool and Make this brush smaller and just flick a few. I might have to go behind this and create a, a layer underneath it just to do the water as well. And these other darker reeds, I think. I'm kind of hopping all over the place at this point. Just sort of get that positioned in there. But I'm going to come underneath that, create a layer there, choose a blue, fairly dark one. I'm going to come back to this. What's this brush do? Why did I put? Oh, yes, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, I want to get the water in there. It's a bit red. Whoops. Because I'm, I'm painting this below that yellow layer. Look, you can see it's... Um, standing out quite nice where's that soft watercolour brush it's that one isn't it I just think maybe I've gone a bit dark with that can I soften it If I put some lighter colour in, oh, I can, cool. That's better, that's better. 
I do want a little bit of dark colour. And I like that sort of bristle effect that gives the water a cool look. Now, I was looking at this paintbrush here, and this gives me kind of a dry brush. And if I pull a light colour in, oh, let's go the other way. It pulls the light colour into that, which gives you that nice sort of, water effect and this brush is called the wet bristles rough brush oops i do like that i'm just trying to get my brush strokes horizontal that's near enough cool so i need to get some more um bushes in let's see which brush am I going to use? It's quite nice. Sort of blends in with it as well at the same time. Is that looking a little bit like oil paint? That's what I'm worried about. Let's try. This uh, brush called Wet Texture Bristle. That's probably better. I didn't want to get something that was going to be um, look too much like oil paint. I think that's a smaller brush. Got some dark colour in it. Get some of these purples in as well. I could be um, just picking colours off here now, couldn't I? That stain that I put in, I think I might just lift that out. I sit and then and then start reworking this. So I just toggled that layer on and off if you didn't see what I was doing. It's got that kind of grungy brush in, which I don't think this painting really, really needs. Um, that's cool because it's putting me these, and I can put these grasses in down here and at the same time, putting me these reeds in so if I create a new layer I can paint some more in even darker I want to be green I think Because I've got that on its own layer, I can lift some colour out and give it a little effect there, going off there. And I can do the same here. Bring this down. I can um, use an eraser again. Just to lift out some of those um, leaves.
There we go. I like it a lot. Now then, uh, foreground, let's have another layer. I like to keep working on layers because I don't want to damage what I've already done, really. Let's come over to this side. We've got this fine brush. Quite like this one. There's this brush here. I, I've not used it yet. I'll just show you what it does. It kind of puts um, an odd edge around the paint, which is definitely justified watercolor effect that you might want to use at some point. But uh, for me, it's not going to work in this painting. I'm using this brush like a, ri a rigger. That's cool. Um, because I can now come up here and fill in this gap and just paint some more leaves in. Like that. Maybe, I don't know, will it let me? It will, that's cool. I can add a few lighter ones down here. So this is like using the glass again. Which means I can have a yellowy color. And so much. A bit lighter than that. Just pop in a few reeds in here. Make the brush really, really thin. And then go for a purple. And then put a few darker ones. It's just putting dark against light. You see see what I mean? I'm putting dark colours against light colours. That just adds a little bit to that. And we've got these yellow flowers to go in. Seems to me that I like to put yellow flowers in my watercolours. Okay, I'm going to go with a bit bigger brush, I think. They could almost be white places. That green might work. But we're small. I don't know if it needs these yellow flowers, you know. I should add, a, add an eraser to this brush pack. On a pencil, really. Just to keep uh, everything easy to select. I thought about just sort of strengthening up the colour in the foreground. And I could use um, this square brush, maybe. Make it a bit bigger. A 
stupid dog, perhaps. Don't know if, I don't know if that's too. Yeah, it's too much. I'll just just trying it out. Let's try it with the green. Yeah, I don't like that brush. Let's let's go for one of these um, other brushes. Uh, what's this one? Wet smear. Oh, this is a nice brush. I've I've not used this yet. Um, yeah, we can go with that. Except I've got the wrong color on there. Totally. There's a bit of um, lag on that as well. Did you notice? I don't think we need it up full opacity either. Then once you get it on, you can get some nice smeary effects. So I can go into the purple. I hope I'm on a new layer here. I think I am. Sort of bring that purple down. Smear that into it as well. Just to get a bit of texture going off. And then you could use, I'm thinking we could go in with the, is it this one? The watercolor fringe brush. Just double around with that a bit. Maybe the soft smudge. Just to give us some different textures down here, really. That's the watercolour fringe, isn't it? Got to be a bit careful with this one. Light pressure makes a massive difference to the effect you get. That just pushes the colour away, doesn't it? I can go back to that and then pop some back in again. I want. It's be quite quite nice for putting texture in um, bushes and things as well. Look, The only thing is, we're getting two different paintings, one on the left and one on the right. So I'm not going to do that. It's all right in the foreground, but I think I've got to treat the trees with the same kind of style. So, not the watercolour fringe. What's this watercolour texture? Oh, no, that's that really heavy. I wonder if we made that small, what, what we'd get. Nope. It's not working for what I want today. You could probably use that just to put a bit of grungy texture in the foreground. Perhaps. Got a bit of colour down there. Possibly. Yeah, I'll leave that in. Uh... Texture soft. So 
It's worth a smear. What happens if I make that small? That's quite nice. Under all of that though. Make it smaller still. I think up here, instead of having it lighter, needs to be um, darker. It's always the light against dark. Maybe greens as well. And now we can go light if we want. I just wanted some dark colours in those reeds. I felt that uh, was required. There we go. I think I don't think we need to put those yellow flowers in, you know, I'm going to leave them out. There we have it, a delicate little watercolour painted in Krita using default brushes. So if your budget doesn't stretch to the Atelier pack and you just want to keep working with default brushes, there's a set there. Um that you can put together in your own tab. And you've got your own little uh, set of watercolour brushes. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a big thumbs up, as always, is much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Because I have lots of videos like this. And I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye.